Welcome to the first edition of Majin Zendo News. Uh, the first thing I would like to do is thank everybody for all the support, the likes, the subs, the comments on all of the Tech Syndicate videos that I've done lately. It has been a blessing to have that much feedback on something that I feel so passionate about. And I just want to extend a great, great thank you to everybody in the community that has given me love and support. Um, we have a lot more content coming. And, um, you know, stick around. If uh, you're a repeat viewer but not a subscriber, I would recommend hitting that subscribe button because there might be some stuff coming up that you would be interested in seeing. Um, i am also uh, got some more work vlogs coming soon. Uh, I figured I would take advantage of my job. Uh, I do work in te the tech field. And a lot of them might not be full jobs that are getting done, but some of them just little circumstances and little situations we get put in. And I decide to pull my camera out and shoot it and see what happens. Um, it's interesting. It can be fun. Uh, but yeah, we've also added the donate PayPal button at the top and the support through YouTube button on the main YouTube channel. Uh, I'm not going to give a long speech and beg for money, but if you are interested in helping out the channel, helping us grow, helping us get some better equipment, and just overall the quality of the production value, uh, please, um, your donation is appreciated. Anybody that donates, you can put a little comment in there, and I will definitely give you a shout out and a tweet with your name thanking you personally. Um, so let's jump into the first topic. Uh, we got Mears with us. He is the co-host of this show. Say hey to everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> From behind the camera. Behind the camera. That's um, that, Trust me, that's where y'all want him to be. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I don't know. You do any console gaming at all? Not at all. I started out making beats off of the PS2, and ever since then, you know, even Grand Theft Auto, I ain't touch nothing. Well, you know, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One still pretty new out. Uh, they've been out for a few years, but, you know, as normal console generations go, uh, they're, they're still pretty young. Um, but for some reason, Microsoft and Sony has decided to update and put new consoles out. Uh, they claim that they're 4K ready. Uh, there's a small issue with some of this, though. Um, for the first time, I think that Microsoft has an edge over Sony. Microsoft does have it 4K capable and actually upgraded the Blu-ray drive in the, to be in a, a UHD Blu-ray drive, which means you can play UHD Blu-ray discs. If you're not familiar with this format, instead of being in a blue box when you go to buy the Blu-ray, it's in a black box and it'll say UHD, which is ultra high definition. Uh, I can do up to 4K video with lossless um, audio. The PlayStation 4 Pro can play certain games in 4K, and it does give the older games a small boost in graphical fidelity, but the problem is they did not add the UHD Blu-ray drive. Um, mm. The people from Sony, for some reason, said, hey, these people were here to play video games and not to watch movies. Uh, that, I think that's a huge mistake on their part. Um, from what I understand, most of the 4K games that are going to be coming out of the system aren't even mainstream titles because they're way too strong uh, graphically to produce. And most of the titles that are going to be in 4K are going to be independent titles that don't really take advantage of hardware limitations to begin with. So you're PlayStation kind of really dropped the ball, I feel, because even when the PS2 was coming about, even before, after the PlayStation 1, at that point I hadn't gotten the DVDs and stuff, but as the PS2 come around, that was a big part of it, because no, you didn't even DVD player That anything. was my first DVD player. That's, you see that how was, both of our responses are congruent. Yeah, right? no, and I mean, even after so I... they took a big downfall, and they really wasn't talking to their customers and saying, hey, what were you intrigued by, like, whenever you first picked up these right. consoles, and to a person who's, like me, who's not really into the gaming, to, to get lost into that, but... No, I agree with you. Entertainment if, if they're wanting you to put these consoles in your entertainment center, give them multiple uses. 
Make it to where, hey, I'd rather go out and spend $400 to upgrade to another PlayStation, even if you already have one, because now you don't have to worry about going out and buying an ultra-high-definition def Blu-ray player. Exactly. You can put your old PlayStation in your bedroom or Let's somewhere else. Let's question this. What is the price <laughs> difference if that other product didn't offer that and you wanted to be able to play that? How much would one of them devices cost? I'm, I'm not even sure. I've never even looked it up because it's, it's not, not a technology I've always been interested in. But if I knew that I could get it, you know, I don't own a 4K TV yet, so it doesn't really, um, you know, matter to me. But the people that do own 4K TVs, you know, that's a big thing. If you can get two for one with it, and I'm pretty sure, just like when the PlayStation 2 had the DVD player built in, it's a lot cheaper than going and buying the UHD DVD or Blu-ray player on its own. Right. And you get the console, you get the video games, you get. You don't have to else. swap back and forth through right. this system and that system. It's all main. No, you're introducing a product to a whole range of people that more that would never even have probably bought the product. And I'm, right. that's how you make money as a company. Yep. And you know Microsoft. I mean, you know, from what I understand is I might be wrong on this, and they said, you know, they definitely said that there's not going to be a firmware update. There's not going to be anything that can unlock the potential of doing this. But even the 4K video game um, aspect of it is going to be a variable frame rate. It's not going to be a locked frame rate with that 4K, which means that that processor gets too warm, or if anything gets to where it's over demanding on the actual console with the hardware, it's going to actually drop down frame rates to be able to meet the demand that the machine's trying to pull. So, I mean, mm. there's like a lot of interesting things there that it's like. All right, so you might be able to get a little bit more anti-aliasing. You might be able to get a little bit more texture detail. You might be able to get a little bit more light control. But, like, if I'm trying to play a game at 60 frames per second and then all hell breaks loose on Call of Duty and all of a sudden it drops down to 25 frames per second just to be able to process the damn game through the console, like, what good is that? I'd rather lose a little bit of the fidelity and make sure that I got a constant gameplay experience, personally. Yeah. Absolutely. I, that's where that's where I'm at. But you know, I don't do a whole lot of console gaming. I did have a PlayStation 4. I gave it to my son. Um, I haven't owned an Xbox since 360. Uh, I think the incorporation of 4K should not even be. I, there's no reason with with the hardware uh, structure that consoles are playing at right now that 4K should even be a thing. There's there's computer high end computers that can't run. 4k perfectly unless you have a graphics card that costs three times as much as the damn console does it doesn't make sense why 4k should be a thing now i understand saying hey this is 4k video compatible with like movies or discs that are you know format for that you go to walmart and buy that's different if you want to be able to buy house of cards on uhd blu-rays and watch it because there's a huge difference between buying it on an uncompressed disc and streaming 4k over netflix it still looks better but you're still getting a, a compressed experience there's no way that you're getting full uncompressed video and audio streaming over any internet connection like that it just it's not going to happen um so yeah you know i'm not i'm not a console war person i'm not going to say this console is better than this console is better than this console uh, but I do think I think what I, th I think they're misleading people a lot, um, you know, because now it's you know the PlayStation 4 Pro. So like you know if 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 my my son if my parents went to go buy my son a play my my son said hey grandma granddad I want a PlayStation 4 for Christmas and like they went and they saw it and they're at Walmart or Best Buy and they're like hey PlayStation 4 Pro oh we should get the better one for him. They buy the better one. I don't even have a 4K TV for, for them to be... He, he'd never be able to take advantage of it. But for a consumer going to buy something, they're going to see the pro part and be like, hey, this is a better system. I should get this one. Right. So you're kind of... It's misleading to me. Well, and uh, Microsoft is the one who's who's got the edge on it. Right. It might be a little bit overkill, but it does provide something extra. And in saying that... Uh, we talked before about like my grandma or something like yeah. that. If I was going to tell her, and I know she's not into gaming, but she was looking for a computer or something and it offered that extra ability for extra 20 or 50 bucks, I would recommend going and getting it because right. then once she upgrades to her TV, then she's in a whole other category and it'll last longer so she won't have to go back. You know, my grandma's 70-something. No. She don't want no, exactly. to have um, 
you know, she's trying to get something to last a little while. Maybe that's what Microsoft, they want the long-term no, users or something. That's though. perfect because if you want to upgrade to a 4K TV, you already have a device in your entertainment center that can give you content that's 4K ready. Absolutely. Micro, uh, Sony calling the PlayStation 4 Pro Pro and trying to market it as 4K, people go and buy it, go get a 4K TV, and then they realize they can play Super Meat Boy in 4K, but they can't watch any 4K Blu-rays. It's limited. You're still having to go buy another device to be able to do that. Mm. And to me, I don't know. You know, it's... Uh, what, what, we we very interested in what the viewers and the subscribers, anybody who's watching us, yeah. they'll make sure to drop a comment below. Give us, give us, give us your views on the situation mm -hmm. because you know what's funny right now is, is the fact that like basically, yeah, they add a few more textures and lighting and stuff on an already older hardware limit platform limitations that's inside of the systems. Um, but the differences don't even really have anything to do with gaming per se. I mean, you're not going to get a 60 FPS. So they're 4K. going like you said. You you predicted this. They're switching into consoles. They're switching it up and to a computer. You're buying right. a computer. No, they're all x86 based platforms. Now they're basically small computers that are running on six year old hardware, and it's not even the top of the and line. They had overstock right. from the last PS right. whatever. So I mean, it's um, you know, it's it's interesting. I mean, we'll see. I mean, this isn't exactly new news if you're watching it on today, but I did wanted to bring it up because I have a lot of the guys at work and stuff asking me a lot about. You know, hey, do I need to get the PS4 Pro to get the, the, the Sony VR or PlayStation VR? And I'm like, uh, you know, I wouldn't upgrade to a PlayStation 4 Pro and I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't even worry about the VR crap either. <laughs> so we'll touch on the VR stuff on another episode. I'm not going to get into that today. We have a, way too many topics to go over. Um, but that will be probably a headline uh, discussion here in the future. Um, Apple has rolled over... Not rolled over, rolled out iOS 10 for their Apple devices. Um, the new operating system makes a bunch of changes. Uh, one of the cool changes is now with the iOS 10 update, you can ask Siri to get you an Uber cab. I guess if you're stumbling out of the bar at 3 in the morning and you can't get on the app and try to figure it out, you could just say, hey, Siri, I need an Uber to my location. And it, Siri will reach out to Uber servers and get the closest Uber driver available to come pick your ass up. Hey, Uber's got an app. Yeah. Hey, Siri's but, app. You're going to use another app to talk to the other app, I yeah. guess. Uber's uh, made a deal with Apple, and then their new update is part of the operating system. Surprisingly, I've been hearing a lot about Uber, and it's not – I know they got a funny name, so people like saying it, and it's sort of catchy – but it's a good service, but I've heard a lot of people talking about um, the self-driving cars and yeah. things like that and pushing it out. So them pushing for a big plug through Siri and going digital. Yeah. No, because now they're using animation. Apple's technology to be able to, their, their back, the backbone of their infrastructure now can use Apple Maps or whatever it's called. I don't have an iPhone, I apologize, but you know what I mean? To be able to use it to get to their destinations and back. Now, the question I have is I don't have the newest Apple phone. I got an Apple phone, but... I know that there's significant changes from each model to model. Right. Even whenever you upgrade it, don't come with all the other things. Right. Like a lot of people, they was complaining the other day. I seen on some of the major shows, they were talking about the gun emoji and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, they changed well, it to a water it, pistol. But I updated it and it didn't change much. Right. Right, but the, I, all the iPhone 6s and 6 Pluses changed. So it, stay, it, it sometimes it pays to be a, a generation behind, is what I'm saying, because I didn't lose mine. I'm still... Uh, no, that's a great segue into my next thing because I was going to talk about that. One of the main changes that I saw from the guys at work that do have an iPhone is that they changed the damn um, gun emoji into a water pistol. And it's like, if people really think that having a gun emoji on an iPhone is what's causing violence, we got a bigger problem. <laughs> we got a right. bigger problem uh, than this. What I, I, one of the biggest things that I was disappointed in that it didn't roll up and the downside of not being up with the uh, the newest iPhone is whenever you do update and they said that you would have features to delete uh, stock yeah. programs and apps. Right, right. But I well, was unable where? to do that because I was a generation behind. So that's only going to be strictly for the newer phones. It, what do you want, a 5? iPhone 5? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so whenever you're going to try to delete iBooks or some some crap that you don't never use, it's not going to work except on the newer phones. Right. They're, they're I well, guess, programmed. That's, that's where Apple's market's genius, man, because they want you to feel that because you can't do that one thing, you need to run out there and spend $800 on a fucking phone. I put it in a folder. <laughs> it's over there lost in whatever folder. I can't even find a compass on my phone. You know, there's so much other stuff. I'm downloading all these other apps. That's one thing. You used to add a console. I love the phone and the app system and especially free apps. Right. So you can just download stuff and experiment. And there's geniuses who are making these things, and some of them perform brilliant tasks. And that's a, another reason why the gaming console is just so they got to come to the computer world, and you're already yeah. using emulators and things like that. It's no, I mean, there's ways to. There's a struggle on on the game systems. I know that. No, so I mean, to integrate their dollars from their core games and also bringing in that new market and continuous stepping up. It seems like they're going to end up losing their game and no, by trying to focus on their DVDs. And no reason why, you know, in a couple generations from now, consoles should be obsolete. Because, I mean, they, it's all going to be computer-based. And for them to get any stronger, they're basically going to turn them into PCs. Right. I mean, Microsoft's already talked about the fact that this might be the last revision of, a, of an actual Xbox. The Xbox One is just basically turning into Xbox. And the next thing they're going to do is instead of having different generations it's just having to where you can update them upgrade them you add a graphics card you add a processor like you keep the main unit but then you can they'll have it where you can buy and add on what you need to to keep up with the times absolutely you might as well buy a computer if you're going to do that i know we sort of went back <laughs> from the apps to the computers and the computer and yeah. what i'm trying to say is i got another idea when how far along do you see it where everything is sort of like you can have a playstation app no, that and makes you know, right. Why are you? Why do you well, have this whole other system? Why don't you format it where you can just run it off any device? You can have your you you no, want definitely. Android, you want Apple or something. You download and instead of games, you can have apps. You Everything can have software apps, based because software there's going to come a point where the hardware is going to reach a limitation to where you're fine. That, I mean, that's what that's where we kind of went back, but we're still going forward now with the with the, the segue into the next topic, which goes hand in hand with this. The iPhone sevens. Boom. The new thing with the iPhone 7 is they're taking away stuff. I mean, like, really, come on, think about this. How powerful do we really need a phone? How powerful do we really need a phone? How much more power do you need in a cell phone? I, like, I don't see where my Galaxy S7 Edge is going to need to be replaced it's, it's anytime so powerful soon. That it, it replaces the computer. No, you, buy, you right? buy one piece of hardware and it's going to be the software that matters. You can buy, like, they sh in the future, like he was saying, I can see you get, you, you go buy a phone. You go up to your carrier, and they're like, okay, which operating system would you like? You pick out your operating system. They plug it in, and they put that operating system on the phone. We got SIM what chips now to do the same like? thing. Yeah, you got you dual SIMs. Hey, hell, you could dual boot your phone. If you want an Apple experience one day, you can. If you want Android experience one day, you can. The programming. It's all, it's all software-based. Right. So, like, I mean, you know, <laughs> we're... We're working with the audio guys. <laughs> no problem. No problem. We'll cut that. We'll, we'll cut, cut that. that. Probably not. But no, I mean, there's, you know, they're taking away the headphone jack on the iPhone what 7 because idea. everybody uses Bluetooth headphones. And now it's like, well, that's fine. Most people are like, that's fine. I never used it anyway. But the funny thing is, is like you never appreciate anything until you don't have it. Well, I've, I got Bluetooth capability right. on my mixer. People can walk into my studio. I have not used it once. But, Not once. I hand them an aux cord. They plug into their phone, and that's it. So when the new phone, they're talking about taking it away, I say, I, I don't see a lot of my customers. I don't see a lot of rappers or people that's working in the music industry just for that fact because it's not. You can only do it one way. Right. You want both ways. You right. know, leave the headphone jack on there and give us the Bluetooth and have it work no, seamlessly work on the programming and the software. There, there, there's, and it's not because they made it thinner because there's thinner phones with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on it. I mean, people are like, oh, that's fine. I'll just go out and buy a new pair of headphones that use the lightning connector. Well, see, that's where Apple's trying to get more money out of you because you have to upgrade headphones if you upgrade the phone. And then if you want to be able to charge it and listen to music at the same time, which I do that at work all the time. Right. If I'm sitting, I've got my phone charging in the van, and then I'll have my headphones in if I'm using my plug-in headphones. That way I'm not killing the battery while I'm listening to music. Absolutely. But now to do that, you have to buy a 40 to $60 adapter to be able to plug two things into your phone. Add-ons is where it's they make the money. The add-ons is where they make the money. 
they'll take a loss on the initial product for peripherals, and every that's how it's always been. Give, give us a run a uh, <laughs> rundown of the topics that we just went through, if you would, because I, I, we had like four topics. It seems like uh, a lot of this is circulating around itself. There's a lot no, of tech news. This going is on. where this is where like, uh, like you know they're different companies and different things, but they all. The thing about it, like you, can, they're taking an existing product, revamping it, either adding a little bit or taking away, calling it a new product, and getting people to rebuy the same shit over and over with stuff that most people don't even use. It's the funny thing, but they want you. To, it's kind of they're getting everybody in the pattern and used to like every year needing that new iPhone every. You know, PlayStation and Microsoft's like, hey, if we can get people used to instead of a 10 year console coming back and saying four to five years is the norm, then, you know, every couple of years we can make more money off of people. And it's like. And Christmas is right around the right, corner. Christmas is right around the corner. You know, we'll add pay stuff. Pay attention, people. Pay attention. We'll add stuff to these things that most people can't even take advantage of, but because it's new and people want the new and updated anything, they'll right. go out and buy it. And it's like what we're good at is thinking the next step ahead of that. So uh, as we talked about the apps in the computer store, what do you see next of is everything just going to go to cell phones or is it going to come back to the desktop sort of and many computers and uh, SSDs and things like because well, even I'm in audio production and I'm just now getting on the tech wave of some of the new items. I don't think that you're going to need consoles for everything. I think it's going to turn into like you're going to have like a base computer or a base system somewhere and everything's going to be like on a mesh. It's going to be like you can stream it to your phone, you can stream it to a laptop, you can stream it to a tablet, you can stream it to any TV in the house. You'll just need one base station basically that will distribute all the content and stuff that you need. And you know, you you can do that with any kind of games you need, you can do that with any kind of multimedia or multimedia. Anything that you intake entertainment wise can technically be put into one thing in your home and you could distribute it through the whole thing and everybody could take advantage of it. I seen something recently that it was uh, advocating that, I guess, products and stuff based around that, yeah. that idea loosely. Yeah. No, it's... Um, what do you... Ha it's have you heard... I'm going to slide a topic in here on no, that. Uh, have you heard about Lo-Fi? Where they got the Wi-Fi coming from lights? Yes, actually, I have seen that. Yes, it's radio signals that I come through the lights. I think that's something on our yeah. topic uh, journey that you could get off on a tangent for a second and no, let they're, people they're, know about it. Those are um, especially like office environments and stuff where you need more line of sight. Um, it gives you a more stable connection over a shorter distance. Uh, they also have they have them for lights and they have them for um, they're trying to incorporate the same technology and other aspects of things to where it's kind of like kind of like the older way of transmitting Wi-Fi between two points was the old little dishes they, they look like mini satellite dishes that you can get line of sight uh, i know like we've done a couple of football fields and stuff where the main school had a dish on one end and like the booth for the announcer had one to get wi-fi to it because you can't there's no there's no real way to be able to run like a cat 5 cat 6 cat 7 to it to get it hardwired network and as long as it's line of sight with no um distractions or interference or anything breaking that i mean it's pretty reliable yep. um but that's what they're basically doing with that. You get a few light bulbs, put them on the mesh with the network, and then like if your cubicle's sitting here, and the light bulb's right there, you've got a direct line I, of sight. I wanna, that never my gets question broken. is, I didn't do enough research, and I'm glad I didn't, because it's, maybe you'll be able to. How how does the internet? How does the Wi-Fi go into the light bulb? Well, it's not really in the light bulb. It's more yeah. like having like its own small little router built in, like a router antenna. It's like many routers everywhere. Um, it's just like, you know, like your, house, your, your router in your house, if you're sitting right next to it with the antennas visible to your laptop, you're going to get a more stable Wi-Fi connection, and it's going to be faster. Um, if you go into another room and you have a wall, a mirror, anything, especially if you go through a kitchen with, like, motors and any kind of, like, stainless steel products, the, the, the signal degradates over the course of sp space. So what I'm saying, does it travel the electric lines to create that? instant connection or is there some technology inside of the light bulb From mechanism that's highly sensitive and it can read through that wall it depends on the technology used like if you use like a zigbee mesh then each light bulb can talk to each other without losing too much signal by the time it amplifies by the next light bulb so you're basically keeping a common um reference level 
right. that you're doing with your with, with your radio signal. Um, I'm not sure. That, I mean, I'm, they can do Ethernet over power. So, I mean, I'm not sure if you can actually. That's something I'll look into. And, yeah. <laughs> Bubble coming Being up. able to, like, maybe using the electrical system to do a direct link, kind of like more of an access point per everything, light bulb. Everything could turn into wild vibe. It, it was traveling the electrical system, then it would surround and capsule your house. And if you did have right. something, it would. I would say that would be more, because if it's sending a signal, it's still sending a signal that if it can send it from that light bulb down to it, but as y'all, a key word I've heard a lot is bottleneck. Yeah. So it's still going to bottleneck coming into but it. Anytime you have any, like, people kind of use bottleneck in the wrong sense. You understand what I mean? Uh, I picture it as everything comes to one and it gets right. jammed up into two. Right. I mean, that's basically what the definition is, but a lot of people that think that, like, anything you have, it's going to have a bottleneck somewhere. It's got to. It's got to. Yeah. I mean, it's there, there's always going to be one. I mean, anything that you have only performs to its 100% efficiency by its lowest common denominator's effective use. You know what I mean? Like, how, what, what's the other word that they use for it? Like, you're only as strong as the weakest link in a chain. You're right. only as strong as the weakest person on your team. Because, I mean, technically, whatever's bringing you down a little bit is going to be the strength of the whole team, you know. Um, it's the same thing with electronics and stuff. I mean, you always want to try to balance out anything you put together, especially when it comes to building Definitely, a Definitely, because you, you're taking in and putting out or something like that. It's like a, right. a water jug. You put a small little hole in it, you can fill it up, and it constantly shoots out there, and it's at a fast rate or something. But as soon as you open up that thing you got right, storage definitely. problems and all definitely your resources well, your power consumption and, and all these other things going to that's play that's why i always recommend if you have a little bit extra in your budget go that next step up with anything you're trying to put together or build because then you probably won't ever be affected or affected by or see that bottleneck because it's actually most of the time working better than you initially calculated it to work so when it does dip a little bit, it's still above the standards you had set for that. So what are you saying? It's not to go with the new PlayStation. Well, no, if somebody <laughs> wants to buy it, and if they well, if they have the Windows a reason, is going to be better long term. Well, it but it, it it appeals to a lot of you know a lot of this stuff. The problem is it's, it just comes down to consumers. Um, how would I put it? I what I was getting on is their bottlenecking or in the, the future, your bottleneck, like a, a metaphorical in yourself, like you got to come to um, uh, using that product in, in a sense, you know, and you're going to be limited on the output that it puts to you. No, yeah, definitely. Well, so, so like the videos and stuff like that. And the, I was just throwing a little cheap shot at the windows and all because like <laughs> the, the, the spill you just now gave, it was sort of like reassuring. Well, it's yeah, like, go no. ahead and re invest a little bit, get the eight, get, go ahead and get the good. Um, even though it might, everybody might not have it. If you're really into tech and stuff, you might want to go ahead and invest in it and you'll be able to support a 4k or something. Yeah. To me, it's really well, uh, not a big difference. To it's them. the marketing. You know what I mean? I mean, just because something's 4K capable doesn't mean it's going to officially run at 4K 100% all the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people that don't know about specs of things and people that aren't interested in technology that and would stuff. Be me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, and, and there's, there's still people out there that can say that they can play a video game at 20 to 25, under 30 frames per second and fine. Um, you know, I'm not an elitist by any means, but I like to try to have the higher frame rate if I can. I mean, every, just about every computer I have in the house can play in 4K. Uh, I got two 970s, four gigs. I got a 770, a GTX 770. I got a R9 390X. Uh, they're all capable of playing at 4K, but I would rather play them at 1440p and then be able to raise up a little bit more of the fidelity and have a constant frame rate and have a cleaner experience than putting it at 4K and having dips in my frames per second. I, you know what I mean? He's like, it, my halo looks clear. <laughs> right. It's coming through clear. He's like, but I'm lagging like a motherfucker. He's right, like right, jumping yeah. around, skipping uh, and shit. <laughs> but I mean, it all comes down to personal. It's 4K though. The, it's 4K. The word I was looking for a minute ago was personal preference. I mean, some people like consoles because they can go in, kick their shoes off, sit on the couch, grab a controller, start up a game and play. You know, I like having a little bit more control over my media. I mean, if it... I, I like to be able to mod stuff if I want to. I like to be able to know that, hey, I can take it off of a hard drive, put it on an SSD, and my load times are a little bit shorter. I can have, I can, 
I can adjust resolutions. I can do in. I can go in and turn anti-aliasing off lower on my 1440p monitor because I got more pixels per inch. So it doesn't show as bad as the 1080p monitors do. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So I mean, and that is, like, it seems like when it, once you step into the gaming world and you get a PC, the other stuff really don't even hold up. And it, like, it, it's, well, there's multiple uses for that platform. You know, at least Microsoft now, and I'm not a Microsoft fanboy by any means. I mean, like, I've never bought a Xbox ever when they came out. I always get mine off of Craigslist for, like, cheap as heck. <laughs> I mean, like, I have Xbox 360 because my wife likes to play Fable games. <laughs> I have an original Xbox, the, the first Xbox that came out, because I like modding them and putting, like, emulators and stuff on them and being able to play using um, X-Link Kai. I mean, there's so many things that... I have stuff like that, but it's not for the initial purpose of the, you know, the gameplay. Um, I've always been a Nintendo and PlayStation person. You know, if I could play Zelda on my computer, if Microsoft would release Zelda games on my computer, I'd be in heaven. A uh, app. You know, it just. They can make an app. I, I can use the Dolphin emulator. I can use other emulators, but it's it's still not the same. But I mean, you know, depending on you know. That's a discussion for another day. We'll get into like the the Nintendo. So there's a lot of tech. Stuff. It's Christmas time coming up. Yep. Go get a PlayStation. Go waste your money on the Microsoft Xbox. You know. No, what I'm saying is right kids, now, if you don't out. have a 4K TV, and if you're not worried about playing indie games in 4K, knowing that you're not going to be able to play UHD Blu-rays, if you want a PlayStation right now, go on Craigslist, pick one up for two or two hundred dollars or half price the original playstation 4 because people are going to think they have to have the new one once their little once their buddy on the school bus gets a new one they're going to be or the buddy at work gets a new one they're going to be wanting to try to get one so they're going to be selling theirs cheap so they can use a little bit of that money to go get one go get you a regular one and have just as much fun as anybody else is because there's no reason to pay full price for any of this stuff especially like he said the, the holidays are coming up Something new at the first of the year, the bait and switch. Yeah. So though, though, this is the stuff from last year you're getting right now. Yeah. And then they've already got something more in the wing. It, it, well, I learned that whenever I was in drafting class about the automobile industry. You know, they're like 10 years out in advance. So oh, yeah. What the they're releasing the this year, they, you know, they're, they're, they're working on flying cars and this and that and all. Anything you could imagine, you better believe that oh, they got some. It's just like in the, the game military. Systems, they, they, they've got a <laughs> CPU hybrid already, the PlayStation, but they want to make every dollar off of it. Same reason we had MP3s, but they said, no, let's go from tapes to CDs. Yep. It, the, the, same, uh, the same concept. Can't be smart, make good decisions. What else we got on your list, bud? Um, <clears throat> I want to switch it up from the, the technology for a little bit so that I can uh, talk about the Dokken battle. I do want to bring this up. Uh, for some reason, I think when it comes to the Dragon Ball Dokken Battle game, uh, global version has always well, been was behind. Was this trending? Huh? Was this uh, in the news, some, uh, a headline or a topic or something that we breaking? This is something that I'm just bringing up. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, so. we breaking on the story. <laughs> well, uh, anybody that plays the game, a lot. some people probably already know about it, but... Uh, the Global's always been behind by... a. a fair margin of um revisions of the the updates and now they're trying to catch global back up with japan so what they did was global jumped from like 2.84 to 2.12 uh and i belong to a Dokken battle community i have a couple of uh personal chat rooms and stuff and a and a community that i belong to and Three or four people out of that community, a good friend of mine, and if I wouldn't have backed up my account, lost their account. Uh, I was, Shazam. I'm not going to say smart enough because I don't want to say these people weren't smart enough, but I've gotten into the habit of backing up my accounts and keeping a constant backup code ready just in case. Uh, luckily, I did have it. If it wasn't for the fact that I backed it up, I would have lost my main account, my good account. Um, I'm not sure where the disconnect came from. I want to say that when Japan, the JP version of it, went to 2.12, we had issues as well. Um, so if you haven't already updated your Dokken Battle account, be very careful of the version you try to download. Uh, make sure it matches. If you do get a modded APK or if you do get the uh, rooted 
APK off of dbz.space. Make sure that it matches. Uh, or for, from here on out, make sure you always email yourself an up-to-date copy of your code. Um, I do have a buddy that lives in Florida that was working on me getting a giveaway account. Had only got interested in the game because of my videos. And the update happened and he lost it. And... <laughs> I'm not sure that he's willing to put the time into starting over, which I understand that. That makes sense. Uh, he was basically just trying to see what my videos were about and trying to help the community. And I'm in the same boat, but luckily I waited until this morning right. until I got over here, did the updates, and I no, guess they just, fixed the bugs maybe by now. I mean, I, if you've already went through this with one version of the game, you think by the time it did come over here, you know, three months later, they would have all that sorted out. So... I just, anybody that hasn't had a chance to update it yet or isn't a, co a frequent uh, user of the game, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Um, Give us some news on uh, the videos. How, how are the other videos doing for you? No, the videos are doing good. That's magic we're, news right we're, there. We're growing. Uh, the, the channel's definitely growing. We're getting bigger every day. I'm trying to work on more content. We've actually expanded to three channels now. We have the main channel, which is Majin Zendo TV. We have the second channel, which is Majin Zendo Fun Zone, which will be more of the video gaming. There's going to be stuff with the family and the kids. It's going to be more of a laid back, fun thing. Uh, some of, a lot of that might be on the fly stuff, but just there's a lot of stuff that goes on with the family and friends that I wouldn't mind having y'all see. The stuff that we do work that, it into a nice format for right, everybody that just it really doesn't have a place on the main channel but we can put all that on the fun zone channel and just see how it does and then i went ahead and made a major zendo tech channel um this show here will be double dip between the tech channel and the main channel um there's going to be a couple shows that we do that too until we start getting uh recognition or people that those channels thriving a little bit more so uh if you happen if you do subscribe to both of them and you see the same video pop up as hey he just released this there's usually like a small delay in the amount and the time that i release per channel if they do get double dip that's what, so i can kind of see the statistics of the first 48 hours of one of the videos on the main channel then i'll kick it to the other channel um some of the technology stuff that once that channel starts thriving a little bit more we'll probably we'll see less and less on one side and it will go to its normal place um yeah but i mean everything's doing great right that's now. good that's a good rundown of the imagine zendo news and definitely know that we got new music yeah i know that personally i just sent you a couple new uh dragon ball theme remixes yeah no they're great some, they're great uh, uh wait until we work some of that in there y'all be on the lookout for it. new intros and all we got a new uh online program we're using to create some of these little intros and stuff hope uh that y'all enjoying that and we're gonna have some new um royalty free music and things like that <laughs> go ahead and point out one of our biggest flaws whenever we started using this the the site promoted it um it was royalty free music but there's obviously more than just us using the site. So some of these people just went out and monetized it. And we're going to get back to using some of the um, Mirrors Beats content, original, you know, back yeah. in there and giving y'all some new stuff, uh, some new sounds. I got a little, uh, some new equipment and stuff going on. And Imagine Zendo is growing, growing, growing. I see yeah. it on the Facebook, I think, on the page. We're up to about 100 likes, and that's pretty quick, man. appreciate everybody on the Facebook. And y'all check out the day-to-day and see um his twitter's connected to everything so you see directly from the youtube and the twitter and it bounces back to the facebook and you can stay connected on uh his day-to-day -day and crazy madness that he <laughs> you know runs through this man's head <laughs> well like he said uh we uh we ha we normally have been using the mirrors beats i'm gonna leave a link to the comment in the not in the comment i always say that in the comment we're gonna leave a link in the comment subscription what, what's and that what else is on your list we didn't cut your list short did you? no that's that, i think we've we've covered everything i wanted to for today got you honestly got you. yeah no i think that um i think that we filled their head with enough stuff that um we got to have something to put what out what was next the last week.